This is C.T. and Shara, sharing information about the safe church policy here at First Presbyterian Church of White Bear Lake. Our policy is all-inclusive and requires that we share this information with all volunteers who work with children, students, and vulnerable adults on an annual basis. We realize that a policy can be dry to read through, so our plan today is to review and explain the policy. Once you're done watching the video, you will be asked to certify that you watch the video in its entirety. Completing that statement is proof that you've watched it, and it gives us an electronic record of your commitment to adhere to the policy. Okay, let's get started. The policy is organized into several sections. We'll review each of those sections briefly, but thoroughly. The policy itself is intended to minimize the risk of abuse and false allegations of abuse. It describes the standards of conduct and procedures designed to protect the children and vulnerable adults of FPC. The safe church policy is in effect any time while on church property or at any church sponsored activity, including transportation to and from such activities. It applies to all employees and volunteers of the church. Defining sexual misconduct. This part of the policy is always uncomfortable to talk about, but it is important to understand. Sexual misconduct and or sexual exploitation of children or vulnerable adults breaches Christian ethical principles by misusing a trust relationship. It is never okay. Examples of this behavior include, but are not limited to any contact or interaction between a child or a vulnerable adult and an adult with the child or the vulnerable adult which is being used for sexual stimulation or to the adult person. This behavior may or may not involve touching. Such behavior by an adult is always considered forced, whether or not the child or vulnerable adult has consented. In some cases, inappropriate behavior may include sexually orientated jokes or humor, sexually demeaning comments, verbal suggestions, or sexual involvement or activity, questions or comments about sexual orientation, unwelcome or inappropriate physical contact, graphic or degrading sexually orientated comments about a person's physical, physical appearance, express or implied sexual advances, displays of sexual suggestive objects or pictures, or repeated requests for social engagements after a person has refused. Again, none of these behaviors are appropriate and will not be tolerated. How do we manage the policy? All volunteers and employees who work with children, youth, or vulnerable adults are required to have undergone a background check performed by an outside vendor contracted by FPC, read the safe church policy, and signed the covenant form on an annual basis. All volunteers must be actively involved with FPC WBL to be considered for approval. A member of the CE committee, a current elder, or staff person will conduct face-to-face -face conversations with prospective volunteers. All volunteers and employees must be at least 18 years of age to be considered for approval. A criminal background check will be run on all employees and volunteers who work with children, youth, and or vulnerable adults to ensure no previous evidence of illegal behavior exists. This background check will be repeated every three years. Once a volunteer is approved, they will retain that approved status unless they have been formally accused of abuse or have not actively participated in the life of FPC for more than one year. All drivers transporting children, youth, or vulnerable adults must have a safe driver background check completed on an annual basis. Signed documents, background check forms, Safe Church Covenant forms, etc will be stored in the church office for a period of time, as determined by our retention guidelines. Finally, the policy will be reviewed annually, that's why we're here today, by all employees and volunteers who work with children, youth, and vulnerable adults. Standards of conduct are included and defined in this policy. Expressions of affection, such as hugs, pats on the back, prayer or physical caretaking, for example, diaper changing, are appropriate. Care should be taken to ensure that these physical expressions of affection are not excessive or imposed on others. A 
A minimum of two adults are required to be present during all church-sponsored programs and events or ministries involving children, youth, or vulnerable adults, regardless of the size of the group. Any one-on-one -on -one interaction between an adult and a child or youth should be conducted in the sight of an adult or in an open and public location. Teen volunteers are permitted to work with adult employees or volunteers. They must be at least 12 years old and may only assist with the care of children younger than themselves. Parents and guardians dropping children off in the nursery will be required to sign in and sign out their child. Sign in will include the name of the child or children and any special needs for that child or children. Children will be released only to their parents and guardians unless written permission is given for another adult to pick them up. Toileting and diaper changing requires that, whenever possible, an adult escort any child in preschool through second grade to the restroom and wait outside. Only one child is permitted in a single stall or bathroom at any time. Children in grades three through six are encouraged to use the buddy system while using the bathrooms. Diaper changing should be done with the doors open, not behind closed doors. Fire evacuation routes have been posted in each room. Workers and volunteers should be trained to understand the evacuation procedures, the location of the fire alarms and fire extinguishers. In the event of a fire, the priority of course is to ensure the safety of the children, youth, and vulnerable adults in our care. Emergency contact info and medical concerns are part of the student registration process completed each year. That information is readily available to the Director of Children's Ministries and the Director of Youth Ministries. Transportation of children, youth, and vulnerable adults can only be performed by those drivers who have successfully completed the annual driver background check and signed the Safe Church Covenant. No youth may drive another child or youth to or from church-sponsored events on behalf of the church. Any deviation from this requires written consent from the parent or guardian on an event basis. Transportation of vulnerable adults requires written consent from a family member. That consent will be in place until such time as it is revoked by the family. That documentation of written consent will be stored and maintained by the office staff. Finally, what to do if you suspect inappropriate behavior. Report the behavior immediately to a staff person supervising the activity or the pastor or any staff person and you will fill out an incident report which is available on the website and at the Welcome Center. Any incident reported will be investigated and taken seriously. Legal authorities will be notified as necessary and in accordance with Minnesota state law. All persons involved with the report or investigation will be asked to keep such information confidential. Sexual misconduct are grounds for dismissal of any employee and removal from an elected or appointed position held by a volunteer.